the nunchuck, or the nunchaku. If you were born in the 80s, you were most likely introduced to these weapons by a dad joke wielding reptile that fought ninjas alongside his brothers who happened to love pizza. But the rest of the world was introduced to these weapons, the nunchuck, in the 1970s on the big screen by one of the most prolific martial artists who has ever lived, none other than Bruce Lee himself, where he certainly demonstrated that these weapons, the nunchuck, are very effective in a martial arts style one-on-one -on -one fight. But the question that is highly debated by historians that we're going to try to answer for you today by giving you a unique perspective of two weaponsmiths that have devoted their lives to the craft and also have martial arts backgrounds is whether or not the nunchuck actually existed on the battlefield. And we are going to explore that question as we try to recreate a nunchuck used by Baba Yaga in today's sponsor, John Wick 4. If you're like me, your introduction to actually using the nunchuck came from just finding a broomstick or whatever pieces of wood you could find, stealing a piece of rope from dad and his duct tape, and simply duct taping a piece of rope in between two sticks. And after just a few minutes of use, you most likely put them down and never touch them again, leaving yourself with some bruised knuckles and most likely a bump on your noggin. Now, in the John Wick series of movies, we see John Wick take on his opponents with a number of different weapons, everything from firearms to swords and even a pencil, which goes to show you that with enough training and awareness of your surroundings, just about every weapon can be made effective in that style of fighting. Which brings us to our first point, training. In regards to this weapon, let's consider the training. Imagine a scenario, you have two completely untrained individuals. One has a pair of nunchuck and the other one has a stick or a baseball bat. Who do you think will be most effective against the other at first? You guessed it, the person with a baseball bat, because it's much more intuitive to use something like a stick or a baseball bat or a crowbar rather than a flex weapon like nunchuck. In fact, a flex weapon in the beginning of the training for the first, let's say, year is more dangerous to the user rather than to the opponent. Now consider the economics of the situation. If you are training to be proficient with nunchuck, to beat someone who is not very experienced but has a baseball bat, you have to spend about a year or two years of rigorous training. Rigorous training means you're eating more food than the person who's not training because you're building up muscle instinct and means you're spending time on training and training is money. Uh, nunchuck presumably is a commoner's weapon. Commoners have to work for a living and work to earn their place in the land, meaning the amount of time you're spending training is the amount of time you're spending not working. And considering the pre-modern world where there was no free time, you don't really have the excuse to provide to your landlord for why you're not tilling the fields or doing all kinds of other stuff. So you're losing money and placing yourself in a position where you will be booted off the land or the property. So in the end result, you have to spend one or two years of training to go back and maybe defeat an opponent who just has a baseball bat. So it costs you two years of resources and time and risk of employment in order to defeat a moron with a stick. Now let's consider the movie John Wick 4. Keanu Reeves was made to train for months in order to be proficient at the choreographed fight. Essentially he had to train to do the dance that is appealing to us on the screen with that weapon. And everybody knows in a dance what move comes next. If you are facing an opponent, that becomes a problem because you don't know which moves comes first. No, I'm not even talking about next. Nunchucks are great because uh, they're easy. Usually you have a stick that you hit somebody with and now you have two sticks that you can hit somebody with and it kind of just swings and it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the hard thing is when you hit somebody with a nunchuck, it bounces back. So 
getting getting Keanu to learn what to do with that transfer of energy when it hits choreography wise we like to do contact hits hits when possible but also uh, a lot of times we can we can do picture hits just that's not really Chad's style so so being able to put in as many contact hits as we can without it whipping back and hitting Keanu and being able to get him to control the nunchucks was kind of the big deal and also, he's not just doing nunchucks, he's doing nunchucks and gun at the same time, and then mixing it with jujitsu at the same time. So it was definitely a learning curve because it's like, how do you put enough nunchucks to make everybody interested and excited, but not too much where it becomes another nunchuck sequence? The training went longer than three months, and it was five days a week, four hours a day. So it was a two hour morning session, lunch, two hour afternoon session. Because John Wick action is a little different. It's a lot. Because Chad wants reality, he wants Rex. He wants it to feel real. He wants the beautiful violence. And so do we, and so do they. There are a handful of different origin stories for this weapon. And that's basically all they are. Stories, myths, legends. Which is pretty much our first red flag. You see, Japan is Japan, always was Japan. It has an extensive culture that's never been broken. That means the weapons used by their warriors and in martial arts all have great documentations of their origin and how they were used, katas, things like that. And the nunchuck just doesn't have any of that. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these stories and see if anything sticks. The first one might seemingly be the most logical choice to where the nunchuck evolved from, and that is the rice flail. And that is because it has a very similar shape and look to it. The only difference from a rice flail and a nunchuck is that the rice flail has one much longer side. So the idea comes from feudal Japan when warring invading armies would come into a village, villagers had to fight them off as long as they could before their backup could arrive. What would they use? They would use whatever was on hand, and rice flails were very common. Now the theory is that somebody would have picked that up and it would have broken, or they would have broken it on purpose to create the nunchuck from that. Now they look very similar. However, why would you take one of the major advantages in battle, which is keeping your opponent away from you, away from yourself, to then create a shorter weapon? Now we're gonna get back to that subject on keeping your enemy away from you, a little later, but this is a really good start because it does have very similar characteristics in how it was made and constructed. Now the next example of a common tool being the predecessor to the nunchuck is the fact that maybe it was a horse implement of some sort, whether it was used to whip the horse or just push them around, or even some people have speculated that they would have been used as a bridle, the flexible part would be put in the teeth and you'd be able to hold on to the two wooden pieces as you ride. Nice theory. Although plausible, seems very speculative and doesn't seem to have any evidence to back that theory up whatsoever, but maybe. Now the next story takes us out of Japan and into China, where sometimes China claims that they were the people who came up with the nunchuck. So the story goes like this. A certain emperor was having trouble fighting off the Mongolians. During a battle, they had to retreat into the hills into a very uh, remote village. In this village, the emperor witnessed them using rice flails. I don't know if they called them rice flails, but basically rice flails, long handled, not nunchucks like, very much like the Japanese rice flail. They noticed them using them and he got a brilliant idea that he was going to equip all of his soldiers with this new weapon, this long handled flail and that that would be the way that they fight off the Mongolian cavalry. So it's said that they then all did equip, they trained a little while with them, and they went into battle and they wiped out the Mongolian horde at the time. During that battle, many of those flails, if you will, broke, leaving them with short handles to finish the fight. And then after that, the emperor thought that that weapon and that idea of his was so great, even though most of them broke, that he wanted to implement them into the actual military training. Thus, nunchucks came from China. So 
So the first three stories of how this became a weapon were just that, stories, word of mouth, legend if you will. The only real evidence that we have of the nunchuck actually existing was a few hundred years ago in Okinawa where citizens were actually barred from not only using traditional weapons, but actually even owning them. They couldn't even have them. So they turned to using things that weren't classified as weapons, so they would use tools to defend themselves. And that's where the idea of nunchucks come again. Once again, using something like a rice flail, cutting off the long end, and turning it into nunchuck. Now, the purpose for cutting off the long end is simply for concealment, which once again, I'm gonna return to the point before, if you're on the battlefield, you don't want a short weapon, you want something full length like a rice flail to keep your opponent away. The only real reason for ever shortening them is either it broke and they had to continue on using it, or B, to conceal it. And if you're concealing a weapon, like a nunchuck, in your shirt, up your sleeve, something like that, that doesn't seem like a battlefield tactic at all now, does it? There's just too many conflicting things with this weapon. If you're leading me to believe that this was developed by common folk, villagers from just normal farm implements that they found around and altered them into the nunchuck and used so proficiently that a military person saw that and then implemented them on the actual battlefield. It's just hard to believe knowing that they would not have been highly trained people to start with and never would have reached that level of impressive nature. Now I don't want to seem one-sided or biased, so we have to address the counter-argument to this. During that time in Okinawa, the higher-ups, the elites of society, were actually living with the villagers and farming with them. So you could say that the elites that did have martial arts training then went into the farms, saw something like the rice flail, and used some sort of form that they already had learned in martial arts and adapted the nunchuck to be a very efficient weapon. Now the reason I say adapted a form of martial arts to work in the nunchuck is because there is no evidence of any existing katas or forms in martial arts that actually use the nunchuck up until this point. So you could make the argument that perhaps this was the birth time of that weapon being used in martial arts and this is where it all started. That's a pretty good argument, and so far, if we're just gonna go on evidence, this has the most precedence, and I believe that this would be the strongest argument for this weapon actually being a utilized martial arts weapon in possible combat. One argument is that someone who wants to have a big stick, a staff, but wants to conceal it, cut this staff in half, tied it up, and stuck it in the sleeve. The problem is, all throughout the depictions, there are plenty of people walking around with staffs in cities, on mountains. It's a common thing for a person to have, especially since most locomotion happens on foot. So why don't you just use one stick instead of having two? So if we're gonna make the case that this weapon existed in battle in any form, we have to go ahead and put it in some sort of category of weapons. What exactly was this? Was it how Bruce Lee showed us? Quick and flashy moves, all kinds of different things. Was it like our certain reptile used two of them and really defeated his enemies that way? I'm not quite sure. So let's go ahead and try to put it in the proper category of weaponry. There's one very plausible scenario for nunchucks being a real weapon. Growing up in Russia, we had a lot of bad neighborhoods and some people would carry a rubber hose filled with lead to protect themselves, essentially making a flexible club 
that delivers much more impact than a stiff one because of the increased radius. So it is possible that the nunchuck is an equivalent of such a flexible club that comes from a world without prolific rubber. However, in that scenario, the nunchuck is being used completely differently than what you see in the martial arts, which produces a dilemma. If the nunchuck a real weapon, the martial art is completely fake. But if the martial art is real, that makes the nunchuck a fake weapon. In this scenario, it has to be one or the other. It cannot be both. All right, let's take a step back from the nunchuck and just address flex weapons in general. All across Europe, they had weapons called flails, and they existed at every class level, from the peasant's flail to the very complex flails that were made for the actual knights and soldiers. Now those were clearly effective weapons that didn't take a whole lot of training to use. And if you happened to land a blow on your desired opponent, you most likely got the outcome you were looking for. So if you just allow me to remove the martial arts from the equation of this argument for just a second and the fact that this is a little bit of a low class weapon, perhaps it does find a place on the battlefield. Now, the question we're trying to answer today is, was this a weapon really used on the battlefield? Now, let's talk about the warrior class in the specific ethnographic situation of feudal Japan, and maybe Edo, period. The warrior class took tremendous pride in their equipment. Uh, the spear and the sword are essentially the same thing, and they are tied to the Shinto rituals and the foundational myth of Japan that the whole island was formed by the sea foam falling from the tip of a sword or a spear. The production of swords and spears involved a purification ceremony. Some smiths went a little bit too far with it, in my opinion, but all of them engaged in it. Uh, the armor expressed tremendous artistic innovation and required multiple, multiple hours to produce. Two sticks on a string just doesn't seem like something that underlines the level of erudition, sophistication that the warrior class prided themselves on. The nunchuck is a much cheaper weapon to produce than a sword, about the same price as a big club, and still cheaper than a bow and arrow. The problem is, flex weapons, especially short ones, are usually more dangerous to the soldiers around you than the opponent. That means it comes with a certain cost. Now, I personally don't think that the two sticks on a string are that dangerous. And that's precisely my point. They're not as effective at actually killing or maiming an opponent on the battlefield, and they will get tangled up at all points. Now, usually in the context of martial arts, everybody trains for a one-on-one -on -one duel, and warfare is not a one-on-one -on -one duel with referees, with rules of engagement, oh, don't hit me here, don't hit me there. War, everything goes. and. If you imagine yourself really going with a pair of nunchucks against a wall of individuals with spears and there are some archers behind them, maybe an arquebus here and there, and certainly some swords involved, it just does not seem plausible to me that it would be a weapon picked up even by a peasant. I'm not even talking about the warrior class. So did we answer the question that we proposed at the beginning of this video? Was this weapon ever used on the battlefield or even in a practical fight whatsoever, even a martial arts fight? I would say we can't really say no, but we most certainly don't have enough evidence to say yes. I believe that it was most likely a self-defense weapon, much like today's modern mace. You carry some mace in your pocket or on your keychain to ward off being mugged or attacked. I think that's most likely. I think it's been developed in the modern age and utilized into martial arts because, quite frankly, it's sexy. And people who run dojos and have different martial arts backgrounds want new customers. They want more people to come in. And because of the big screen, because of movies, that nunchuck is really 
kind of just goes hand in hand with martial arts and people want to learn it. So they figured out a way to teach it, to make it look flashy, and quite frankly, they found out a way to make it an effective weapon. And thanks to Lionsgate for sponsoring this video, and if you want to see these nunchucks in action, be sure to check out John Wick 4 in theaters now. And don't forget to like this video.